Getting a Steam Deck just got a whole lot easier. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready. This is the channel all about the Steam Deck and this is my weekly news update and this is a big news update for the Steam Deck. There's some great stuff to talk about. But before I jump into it, if you need any new accessories for your Steam Deck, like a new SD card, a new dock, anything you can think of, all of it is linked down in the description. And if you use those links, it really helps me out because I get a little bit of a kickback. The first big update is that we now know exactly how many Steam Decks have been sold and the number is extremely high, like honestly higher than I thought at over a million units. This news was delivered in a huge batch of news from Valve. On top of the fact that they've sold over a million Steam Decks, they also announced that you no longer need a reservation to buy a Steam Deck. You can just literally go to the Valve website and order a Steam Deck and it'll ship in the next batch alongside all the other ones that were ordered, which is great. They figured out all the supply chain issues and made this thing the most available that it's been since it came out, which is exactly what I wanted to see and it's honestly happening a lot faster than I thought it would. I think I've said in videos that I didn't really ever expect them to be able to get to a point where you can just order a Steam Deck on Steam like you do any other game and it'll just show up within the next couple weeks. But here we are in the console's first year and not only has Valve figured out the supply chain issues and figured out how to make it easier to order, they've also finally released their long awaited dock. And I don't know if it's controversy, there's just a lot to go over with it. So first of all, you order the this dock just like you do the Steam Deck, you can either go to the website for the Steam Deck and just go to the dock section and order it from there with your Steam account, or you can just look it up on Steam. And I've noticed that since it went up for sale, it's been in the top seller slot, so that's a good sign for the dock alongside the Steam Deck itself. Like people obviously want to use this thing as a Nintendo Switch where they can play it on their TV, but they also maybe want to try out the desktop mode, which I highly recommend because it's quicker and snappier than Windows is. And honestly, I found myself using it way more than I ever thought I would. I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. $89 is less than I initially predicted. I think I said I thought it was going to be $100 when I was making my first predictions, just because it's the official Valve dock. They're probably taking a little bit of a loss on the Steam Deck, and where you see that loss being made up is usually with accessories with consoles like this. So just going along with that line of thinking, I thought they would be charging around 100 bucks for the dock. So $89, so $10 less than I initially predicted, which is a good thing, but you also have to compare this to the price of the other docks that are on the market, like the ones from JSOX or iVolar, or even just a USB-C hub that you would plug into the top of your Steam Deck and kind of let hang off the back. And all of those range from around $30 to the high end of like $50. So you are going to be paying a little bit more for a dock with the Steam Deck logo. But one benefit you get with this dock that you're not getting with any of these other docks, as far as I can tell, is that you're getting an extra Steam Deck charger, which is great because the Steam Deck needs 45 watts to charge and unless you have like a MacBook Pro or a device that needs 45 watts plus of power, which honestly you might have but chances are you don't, you're going to want an extra charger at some point. So packaging that in kind of explains why this dock is more expensive than the other ones that you can get. But either way, I wish they would sell it without this charger and just let us pay a little bit less, like maybe charge 40 or $50 for just the dock without the charger that's included because I don't know, I don't exactly need another charger because the anchor power bank I bought with the six foot cables uh, that uh, came with a 45 watt charger. So I'm basically good to go on chargers. So yeah, I'd like an option to pay a little bit less and get the dock without the charger. Long story short. But regardless, for the price, it's good to see them including an extra charger, and I guess you really can never have too many chargers for a device. Like, I still hoard all of my different Nintendo Switch chargers from my launch unit, to my OLED, to the light I bought my fiance. It's nice to have those extra chargers laying around, so I'm not necessarily complaining, I just wish there was another option where we could just get the dock for a cheaper price. Because I know some people are saying like, yeah, 90 bucks is a little out of my price range, but the counter to that is that, again, this thing's been sitting in the top sellers on Steam, so it's obviously not turning too many people off. Another interesting thing about this dock is the USB-C cord that comes out the back of it. It's basically like machine fitted for the Steam Deck. Like it's got a little bit of an edge to it, a little slant on it, so it'll clip into the top of your Steam Deck with a little bit more of a reinforced connection than you would see on something like the JSOX dock. Obviously, it's not necessary. Like I like the L-shaped bracket we have on the JSOX dock. It works totally fine, but having that machine fitted premium look is what I think people were waiting for 
if they were waiting for this Steam Deck dock. And also, it fits perfectly into the actual dock from what I can tell. Mine is coming this Friday, so I'll do a full unboxing and review. But yeah, it looks like a very solid product, which, you know, it's from Valve. I think it's fair to say they make pretty solid products. Uh, it's nice to see that it's here, even though it took almost a year to happen. And while the price, again, is a little bit high, it's not outrageously high. So overall, I think this thing is worth picking up if you do care about that Steam Deck branding, but I don't think you're really going to miss out on all that much if you go with something like the JSOX dock. But again, I'll have more impressions once I actually get the dock in hand. And I have to point out how big of a milestone all of this is for the Steam Deck because 1 million sales is great. That basically guarantees that Valve will continue to pay attention to this thing for years to come. There's obviously a market for it. A lot of people didn't think there would be. They said, no, the Nintendo Switch is what people are going to stick with. There's no way they'll switch to something like a handheld PC like the Steam Deck. But here we are. This thing's pushed a million units. That's great. We're probably going to see that Steam Deck 2 sooner than later. I'm glad there's some true competition in the handheld market once again, because with Sony's absence, Nintendo's just been cleaning up solo. And while, yeah, the Switch was great at launch, they've really been dragging their feet on improving the performance. And where I really noticed how big of a difference there is between the Steam Deck and the Switch OLED is with Splatoon 3. So yeah, the game runs at 60 frames per second, which I think is great. I want more games to run at 60 on the Switch. The issue is there's a lot of jaggies in the resolution and it doesn't really feel like a graphical upgrade over Splatoon 2, which, you know, if you're putting a numbered sequel out, I'd like to see some sort of a visual upgrade there. And yeah, having an OLED screen on the Switch kind of makes up for that, but on the Steam Deck, you can just get that plugin I talked about two videos ago that lets you increase the saturation on the screen. And that doesn't obviously make it look as good as an OLED screen, but it brings it much closer because before with the stock screen, there is definitely a noticeable gulf, but if you get this saturation increaser, if it really bothers you that much, you can bring your Steam Deck closer. And no, it definitely doesn't make the LCD screen look like an OLED screen. We're not gonna get crazy here, but it lessens that gap, which I think is important for people who really don't wanna ditch that OLED screen on the Switch. For me personally, I'll take resolution and frame rate and just playability overall before uh, an OLED screen. That's just me personally. And uh, after my bad experience with the Ion Neo Air, where I'm like, why did they even go with an OLED screen if they only have a 1080p option and you'll never play a game at 1080p on this thing and dropping it to 720 just breaks the scaling. I don't care all that much about OLED is my greater point in this conversation. Of course, being able to order this thing and have it within a week or two is great as well. That makes it feel like more of a thing you feel safe buying, right? Like there's a little bit of nebulous factor to pre-ordering something months in advance and then just waiting and waiting and waiting for your email to come up. I thought the system was fine. Obviously, I put my $5 down last year and then when my order came up, I bought it and it was a great experience all around. But I can see for like the average person who's kind of been waiting to see what would happen with the Steam Deck, it would make them a little bit more comfortable picking this thing up, knowing that they're ordering it and they're going to have it within a couple weeks. And then finally, I'm glad this all timed up perfectly with being able to order a dock. Obviously, the Steam Deck doesn't play as well as a dedicated gaming PC or a PS5 or Xbox Series X or S on a TV. Like you're still limited at the ceiling just like you are with the Nintendo Switch, but being able to drop that thing on a dock and then have a one cable solution where all of your keyboard, your mouse, your HDMI, your display port, all of those extra things are just left plugged into your dock and you can drop the thing on and be good to go. That's what really unlocks the true potential of the Steam Deck in my opinion. And that's what's going to be the gateway for people to try Linux, I think. So really all that's left for Valve to figure out is releasing SteamOS 3.0 so that people can install it on their main PCs, which is something I really want to do. I just got a new gaming laptop and I'm already feeling the pain of Windows slowing everything down on that machine. I would love to make a partition for SteamOS to play games that have shader compilation issues because SteamOS essentially solves all those issues. And as someone super sensitive to stutter, that is a big deal to me. And also, of course, they need to introduce dual booting. I know that Windows is isn't really the biggest deal on the Steam Deck, but a lot of the games I play are online games like Destiny 2. And what really sucks is that it doesn't seem like Bungie is paying attention at all to the Linux scene. It seems like they're just writing it off and they'll never really pay attention enough to make it so that the easy anti-cheat or battle eye software they're using works on the Steam Deck with Destiny 2. So the only option I have right now to play Destiny 2 on this handheld that I love is to install Windows. And the SD card method, it works, it works okay, it just doesn't work great. It's definitely slower than what I've seen 
seen on YouTube of people installing Windows 11 natively on their Steam Deck, but the process of partitioning it isn't very easy and it's not something I really want to undo when they do release. This boot picker thing where you can pick between SteamOS and Windows 11 when you start the thing up. So yeah, I'd really like to see them release that sooner rather than later. And once that is released, I'd like to see more updates on the graphics driver side of things because that's been really slow and I think that's what's really holding the Steam Deck back on the Windows side of things, really. On the SteamOS side of things, everything is pretty much PG Keen, which is great. And the last news story I have for you guys today is surrounding a promotional video that Valve put out to announce all of these big changes and the OS stuff that they've been working on over the past few months. Like, you know, these Steam Deck update videos they've been doing every few months. But people quickly noticed that the Steam Deck that was being featured prominently had the Yuzu emulator showing on the home screen. Nibel is the account that initially tweeted this out when I saw it. They pointed out that, yeah, there's something a little fishy going on on the home screen of the Steam Deck. So if you look a little bit closer, it's very easy to see that Yuzu emulator there, which, you know, is a big problem for Valve or could be a big problem for Valve because Nintendo has been absolutely ruthless about taking down videos that not only show how to play games on Yuzu from the Nintendo Switch, but even just really talking about it has gotten some videos taken down, which is kind of crazy. It's not really the biggest controversy in the world. They ended up just taking the video down. It just goes to show that the team working on this at Valve is like normal people, right? Like they're not this hardcore Sony or Nintendo level team that's making these like finely tuned handhelds where, you know, everything is locked down and you can only play the games that are released for it. You're in that walled garden sort of scenario. And on the Steam Deck, you're obviously getting the best experience through Steam, but if you want to install stuff like the Epic Game Store, Valve just totally lets you do it. So yeah, going all the way down to the marketing, they're just using their personal Steam Decks for these videos. I, I just think that's really cool. That's what makes this device my favorite device out of all the ones I own between the PS5, the Xbox Series X, and of course the Nintendo Switch. Like having the customizability of a handheld PC is great, but knowing that the team who's working on this thing is just people who actually like playing on it, that's what makes it even better.